Fall's programme. Uh, we've been joined now by Fianna Fáil's uh, campaign director, Niall Collins, and by uh, Fine Gael TD, uh, Jerry Buttermer, who was also one of those campaigning for a yes vote on this. Uh, Jerry Buttermer, what are your, you've campaigned, looked for this for a long time. It's something you've supported uh, from very early in your political career. What, uh, what are your thoughts this afternoon? Today is just absolutely emotional. It just, words won't describe it, Brian, but it's a fantastic decision by the Irish people and <coughs> the clip of the, of the people there emphasised it was one national conversation and mm. I've knocked on doors since before Easter four nights a week on this referendum with a group of people who are never active politically in, the, in their lives and we actually went door to door and told our stories and our conversations and it gave a passport to people who were lesbian or gay to come out and to talk to their parents and grandparents and in turn it allowed parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters to reflect upon their own lives and say, yes, this is, a, this is an important thing in our family. Mm -hmm. And so a coalition of people were built and we went to the four corners of the country. So today is just one wonderful day. It really is a reflection of Ireland, um, of how we've changed, how we've evolved. We're a small nation with a huge heart, and today we are shining brightly across the world as and a nation of, that, in, that, it, that respects and cherishes all of its children equally. And, and this point about it being very personal for so many people, I mean, it's clearly per, very personal for you as a, as a gay man, um, um, but it, that, that sense of, 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 of uh, an invested interest in the issue seems to have gone beyond that. I mean, as you say, into families uh, and into to others who, you know, who have friends who are gay, People became very engaged in this on that kind of personal level, did they? And that's what resonated with people, because it was about, in, in many cases, men and women who were in long-term relationships within the gay community, who were sidelined and marginalised, and who today are able to walk in, as I saw this morning in Cork City Hall, beaming and being accepted as being equal. And equally, it, it's about the story uh, of a lady who I became very good friends with, who was excluded from her partner's funeral. She was her carer. She lived with her for... 10 odd years mm. and she cared for her but she was excluded in the final hours of her life and from her funeral and today is a celebration it's one where we must heal the wounds of the campaign that were there mm. walk with those who voted against to ensure that our country is a more accepting and welcoming place yeah i mean uh, that's interesting in relation to the wounds what what do you <coughs> say to maybe it's a third of people whatever the final figure who voted no yesterday and presumably it includes your own, some of your own constituents, in, constituents in, in Cork. What's your message to them today? Well, my message is very simple. This campaign, I, I, from my perspective, was carried out very respectfully. I have good time for David. Uh, I respect his right to have a different viewpoint to me. Uh, that's what democracy is. And, and what we must do now is to ensure that the issues that we spoke about that were not part of the campaign as such are dealt with by government, but equally, that we live and, and, and coexist in a society where we're accepting inclusive of all of us, no matter who we are, black or white, religious or none, gay or straight. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got from this campaign, was the fact that people who had deeply held views, that, that, I, I had no problem with that, but today we must start to live together, la Kayla, side by side. Now, Collins, what's the, what's the message from this vote, do you think? Well, uh, what I'm taking from today's vote, uh, apart from all that has been said earlier on in terms of it being a, a, a monumental, monumentous um, decision in terms of the, the result, which is imminent, uh, the fact that it's unique around the world, it's the first um, time that uh, marriage equality has been brought in by popular vote, you know, the, the eyes of the world are on Ireland in relation to that. What really struck me during the campaign was the uh, personal testimonies that people brought to the debate. Um, for my own part, I would have travelled around the country and one of the first public meetings that I did was in Galway and uh, I think it's fair to say that the majority in the room were no people and as I engaged with them, um, you know, they, they were obviously advancing their points of view and their arguments. But a lady from Westport who had travelled down to Galway City to this meeting stood up <coughs> and gave her own personal testimony how she had reared five children. She had worked as a national school teacher. She had prepared kids for years for their first uh, mm. confession, their first communion, confirmation, uh, all the way along the line. And she just asked the people in the room, why should her two sons be seen as different in the eyes of the law because she had one son that was gay. And I think, you know, it, it really struck a chord with people then in the room. And, and as I travelled around the country, I, I did, you know, public meetings mm -hmm. in the four corners of the country. I, I would always ask people who were doubtful in the middle, because, you know, in, in referendums you have 
committed yes people and you've committed no people and, and you're really trying to focus on the middle ground the undecided I, you know, I said to people, you know, how will your life be diminished? How will your marriage be diminished? How will my marriage, I'm a married man with kids, mm. how will my marriage be diminished if, if the yes uh, campaign succeeds? And the answer was, it won't be diminished. And I think uh, as the campaign went on, and I was also struck yeah, as well, it was the first, just a final point, it was the first referendum where the, the independent official voices, like uh, Justice Kevin Cross, played a significant role. I think he really did an excellent job, and he did it in a very uh, professional manner. And also Geoffrey Shannon. Who, who was interviewed as part of an, an, RTE, an RTE contribution to the debate, you know, outlined some of the areas that were being brought in that we were saying were extraneous right. to the debate. Yeah, what, what about that, you, D David Quinn, at this stage, uh, the, the, the role played, particularly by the Referendum Commission? I mean, I think there was some criticism uh, at certain stages from the no side. Uh, overall, what's your well, verdict on Well, I mean, if I can just make a broader point first, uh, I mean, just again to, um, you know, like as a no voter and, mm. uh, you know, representing a roughly 35% or whatever it was of people who voted no, I mean, just to explain again, I mean, you know, everybody gay or straight starts off in life, obviously, with both a mother and a father. I mean, that's just the basic fact of life. And uh, I mean, my belief, and I think the belief of a lot of no voters, would be that our constitution and our laws around family and so on should, you know, reflect mm. the importance of motherhood and fatherhood. And uh, my concern is that our laws can't reflect that anymore. Uh, now, I don't want to rehash the arguments. <laughs> I don't want to rain on anybody's parade today. But I think it's important just to state again, you know, why we voted no and why we campaigned for a no vote. Mm -hmm. uh, your point about the referendum commissioner. I mean, the referendum uh, commission, um, you know, gave uh, advice that was, uh, I would say, helpful to the yes side and also some advice that was helpful to the no, uh, to the no side. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, he confirmed our point of view that if the referendum goes through, which it has, it would be very difficult for any future um, for any future government to pass a law around things like adoption and surrogacy and AHR to try to give a preference to motherhood and fatherhood in our laws. So he basically confirmed that fact, and that's something we were advancing through the campaign. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just also, I mean, so we have about 35 percent, roughly, of people who voted mm -hmm. no. And uh, had we a single major political party on our side, that obviously would have gone up. Yeah. But there's 35 percent of people today, but roughly 600,000 people. And, and that's and remember, 35 percent is higher than the level of political support for any party right now. Right. And they don't have any political party to represent. But them. it's on a particular issue. Well, I sure, suppose. sure, sure. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. nonetheless, it is yeah. strange, though. It is strange yeah. because I can't think of another democracy like it. Because in other countries which have debated this, you had a very significant body of politicians mm. or very big uh, political parties in places like Australia, France, Spain, Italy, etc., yeah. um, who were kind of on the no side, if I can put it that way. But right. here, no one. But we, we of course, here have had referendums in the past, and maybe I'll bring you in on this. This one now, but we've had referendums in the past where uh, most, if not necessarily all, but most political parties have been urging one vote. And in Europe, we know it's gone the other way. It went the other way uh, in relation to the recent referendum on uh, on the Shannon. So I wonder, you know, do, do our parties, to that extent, really not that important um, when a question is being put directly to the people? I suspect not. Um, in some respects, certainly when we look at a referendum where it's more about social issues um, and society. Uh, the role of the political party may not actually be as strong um, or as powerful as in, say, other kind of uh, legislative um, style kind of referenda. Mm -hmm. um, but just referring back to other referenda, what I kind of found most encouraging about today's results so far is almost the holistic nature of it. Um, at this stage, obviously not all the results are in, um, we don't have a confirmation, but from what we can see, with the exception possibly of Donegal, South West, um, Roscommon, and mm -hmm. um, possibly Kevin Monaghan, um, you're looking at 40 out of the 43 constituencies are actually saying yes, which is a huge endorsement. Even if we look back to the divorce referendum, okay, it's 20 years ago and obviously things have changed. But at that stage, it was Dublin that carried mm -hmm. um, the entire kind of result. You only had five constituencies outside of Dublin that actually voted for divorce. You had 25 constituencies saying no. Whereas in this referendum, it looks like at most it could be three constituencies. It's a lot more holistic, and I think it, it gives an awful so, lot more encouragement. So, so David, has there been, has there been, I mean, is, are we looking at really a very fundamental shift in the way Irish people view these issues? Um, so that, I, that's I, that mean, kind of I mean, I think, I think um, I mean, obviously there is a difference uh, between the rural and the urban vote, because obviously it's much closer in a lot mm. of the rural areas. And uh, Dublin, I mean, you know, this is a factor which probably has to be mentioned. Uh, this didn't really turn into a church-state battle, thank God because I don't think that would have been served anybody's interest. But Dublin is uh, undoubtedly uh, the most secular city uh, in the country. And um, I think there's about 15% church attendance or something like that, you know, like on a weekly basis. So um, mm. uh, that can't be discounted as a factor. As we've become you know, more secular, mm. it has become easier for what I'll 
uh, advisedly call uh, the Liberal side to win and prevail in referendum campaigns. So back in 1995, that's 20 years ago, we, you know, we'd have had quite a different Ireland. Um, Dublin would have still been the most secular part of Ireland, but you'd have had a lot more mass attendance yeah. back then. And well, so I, I, think, I think that's been a big factor. There, I think it also affects us becoming more secular. Yeah, Jerry. Well, I think, I think David made an interesting point. I, I think the, the hierarchy made a mistake in this referendum. And I said, as a Catholic who spent five years in the seminary, who was very strong faith, I think their, their full court press uh, in the last three weeks did put people off from voting. Um, I think David is not necessarily correct in terms of the urban rural, because if you look at the people in Dublin, a lot of them were people from rural Ireland living in Dublin now. Uh, but going back to the other point, this, this referendum it was encapsulated for me in terms of yesterday I met a woman who said she had been going to Joseph or hairdresser for 30 years. Yesterday was the first day she recognised Can, I, sorry, sorry, can yeah. I stop you? I'm very sorry to cut you off in mid sentence, but we have a result. Sure. That's our first result, and it's from Sligo Leitrim. And it's just been drawn to my attention now. So here's the first result uh, of the referendum on same sex marriage from the constituency of Sligo North Leitrim, and it's a yes vote there 19,043 votes in favour, 16,502 uh, voting no. And there you have the uh, yes vote 53.6% and no 46.4 percent and the turnout there in uh, Sligo North Leitrim 57.8 percent of the electorate turning out to cast their votes in the marriage referendum and there's the comparison in terms of the turnout with the mm -hmm. recent referendums in the relation to the abolition of the Shannad and the children's referendum so it's well ahead of uh, both of those and I think that's a pattern we'll see repeated uh, through the afternoon now as these results come in but here is the first official result of the referendum on same-sex marriage. I should say that in one of our earlier programs we described the Dublin North West uh, um, uh, figures which we brought to you as been an official result and uh, that was in fact uh, unofficial and uh, we're awaiting confirmation of that one from uh, Dublin North West but there you have the first uh, of the constituencies uh, Sligo North Leitrim 53 and a half percent uh, just over that and uh, 46 and a half percent uh, against um, Niall Collins uh, the first of these results in in a constituency that would be very mixed I think it's got a <coughs> sizable urban centre there in Sligo but also large rural areas as well yeah, I, I think the, the, the official figure will probably reflect the trend of that type of uh, constituency across the rest mm -hmm. of the country. It'll be in the, in the region of the, the mid to the high 50s in favour of yeses, and, and that seems to be coming through there. Just going back to the, to the previous point we were just discussing in relation to the input of the political parties, mm -hmm. it, it was also unique that all the political parties were on the same side of the debate, but this, this debate, I suppose, it, it was a... It was different also in the sense that um, it was about people, it was about people's lives. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about putting money into people's pockets. It wasn't about Europe. It wasn't about the Shannon. It, it was ex exceptionally unique from that point of view. So um, the, the civil society groups, I think, can, can really mm -hmm. take a collective bow in terms of how they organized themselves and got themselves together. And in fairness to the, to, to the Yes Equality and to the other uh, civic society groups who were supporting it, they, they utilized the knowledge of campaigning of the political parties because I know all the, um, the, the general secretaries of all the political parties use meet with the civil society mm. groups on a regular basis in terms of their input in, into uh, the, the Yes campaign. So I suppose the political parties weren't up front and centre. We were supporting mm. it. That was important. And yes, there, there was, uh, to acknowledge um, what David has been saying, that there's a, a significant no vote in terms of it. You know, 600,000 people, I think, is the figure you quoted, David. And we absolutely respect those mm. people. There are people within my party. They're in Jerry's party. They're in all the political parties. All the political parties have people who uh, had issues with this referendum, with, with, with the concept, and they voted against it. And I think those people have to be absolutely respected. But the fund but the, the, the real striking thing about all the debates we had within the Fianna Fáil party around the country and even in my own constituency meeting was there was great respect. Mm -hmm. People respected each other's point of view and they just stated their own point of view and well, they it's moved also, on. It's also striking, I was just going to say tonight, it's also, it's also striking you mentioned civic society groups but on the no side it was similar groups who were uh, if you like, uh, uh, providing the, the means to be able to debate this over the last uh, several weeks. So Correct, yeah. But that was mirrored on both sides, wasn't it? It was yeah. indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of... Um, I mean, I suppose I go back to mentioning uh, the party whip system. Um, most parliaments that have votes on these things do allow a free vote. I think the Australian Parliament has had two free votes on this, and it's gone down twice uh, in the Australian Parliament. And uh, Britain uh, um, had a free vote on this. I think about half the Conservative MPs voted against, 22 Labour MPs voted against. Uh, the French Parliament had a free vote. We just don't allow free votes. I mean,
uh, in the Australian Parliament and uh, Britain uh, um, had a free vote on this. I think about half the Conservative MPs voted against, 22 Labour MPs voted against. Uh, the French Parliament had a free vote. We just don't allow free votes. I mean, we really uh, you know, should have allowed a free vote on all these various issues. And, and, that's, and, I, and I think it's a very negative um, uh, feature of Irish politics mm. that we don't do that. We really need, well, however they fall out, to allow free votes on issues of this type. You know, the Bundestag mm -hmm. in Germany allows a free vote. I suppose we had the so ultimate on. free vote, we had a referendum. Yeah, but still, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, yeah, but I mean, more politicians, I mean, there's more politicians voted no than actually said. I mean, there's politicians I know personally who said they're voting no, but wouldn't say so publicly. You know, because they were scared of losing the party grip or, or the fallout for them, and that's not healthy. All right, Jerry. I, I wouldn't agree. Let, 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 yeah. so let me bring Jerry But in. equally, I think, I mean, I think you're overstating the number of politicians who voted no. Yeah, no, that's to be why, fair, not a free, but why not I mean, free vote, I mean, we had a very strong debate in, 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 in the houses of Gibraltar on the referendum. Vote, though, seriously. And, and, I mean, equally, I mean, and, and I'm a member of the church, the, there were priests and religious who voted yes. Yes, there were. Uh, and who were... You know, given no free vote either. But the important point is, well, we had we had, we had a very we had a very respectful debate. Uh, it, it was one that, that I think, going back to Niall's point, that we had we had a great sense of people telling their own stories. But the important point was, mm -hmm. the Irish people voted in a referendum. This is a massive endorsement by the Irish people, and the Irish mm -hmm. people should be thanked for the maturity in which they engaged participated, questioned and made a decision. Jerry, we'll give you that last word before we take this short break. Back with more though, more results uh, and more discussion uh, over the next couple of hours in this referendum 2015. Don't go away.